Alright, it is Sunday. It is 2.09 p.m. Uh, I just got done doing a video with Paranormal Pat, so please expect that video to come out soon. But before I get into today's podcast, I want to thank Blackstone Labs for sponsoring me, sponsoring this podcast. And you can get 20% off your entire order, blackstonelabs.com. That's 20% off your entire Look, you're trying to get jacked, you're trying to get shredded, you're trying to put on muscle, you're trying to achieve the dream body you want. Well, guess the fuck what? Blackstone Labs can help you. They sell all the supplements you need. Pre-workout, branched chain amino acid, thermogenics. These are the things that you need to get to achieve the body you want. And if you want that assistance, you can get 20% off your entire order at BlackstoneLabs.com. Use promo code B to the fourth power at checkout and get yourself hooked the fuck up. Also to CH Concrete serving the San Francisco Bay Area. That is CH Concrete serving the San Francisco Bay Area. No job too big, no job too small. You want to cement your backyard, you want to cement your front yard. Look, patios, walkways, driveways, foundations, it does not fucking matter. Also to... They also do uh, residential, commercial, doesn't matter. They'll take care of you. That is CH Concrete. Just mention the Angry Dad and get that free estimate. Now, let's get into today's podcast. And I have my good friend right here. This is Cody. Cody, introduce yourself. What's up, guys? This is Cody uh, here with the Angry Dad. Uh, good friend. Uh, been listening to the podcast for a minute. Mm-hmm. And I've been getting in his ear. Like, love to get on here and talk with you one time. See how that goes and uh, see how it is to ask you a couple questions. Yeah, that's how the safe podcast is going to go. So it's going to be slightly different than what we normally do. So go ahead, fire away, Cody. So what I wanted to do, I was trying to think of different topics mm-hmm. we could have when we uh, linked up today. Yeah. And I ended up coming to a realization that a lot of people probably listen to you, but I don't know if anybody actually knows a lot of the other things that really make you click as far as your day to day. You know, you know, things that bother you, things that you wish people would get to, yeah. together yeah. on. You know, <laughs> they definitely know what the, those things, but I, I wanted to ask, you know, some questions that I had mm-hmm. and then maybe some questions that some of your viewers might have that they haven't been able yeah. to ask you. So the first thing I want to know that I think most people want to know is well, first, how long have you been in the podcast game? Um, I want to say I've been doing podcasts for maybe about four, three years, maybe four years now. I can't remember the exact day I started. But it's been quite a while already. Um, I, with this episode right here, I believe it's 334. And has it always been through the same program? Or uh, the same program, same everything. I always use Spreaker. Spreaker's the only app that I, it's what I was shown. It's what I know. It's simple, easy to use, plug and play, and it's dummy proof. So that's just, you know, like I said, really? I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not very computer inclined, so it makes it a lot easier user for me. User friendly. Yeah, very yeah. user friendly. That's always nice. Yeah. So then, uh, was it somebody that did podcasts that you knew that gave you the information, or did you search it out on your own? I did not search it out on my own. Didn't even try to do it on my own at first because uh, you know you just met my uh, my buddy Pat, mm-hmm. paranormal Pat, Pat Tivity. Pat. Pat, check it out. He's the one that actually put me on it. Him and my buddy Brian both do podcasts. They do a podcast called It Be Like That. I listen to it. I used to, you know, I really enjoy. It. I still listen to it because they still produce it, and. He was like, you need to do a podcast. You need to do a podcast. I did a podcast with them. I've been on their show a few times. I've done. I've eaten some disgusting things because of them, but it is what it is. And um, and eventually, you know, Pat just handed me down to the point where he's like, look, download the app. I downloaded the app. And once I downloaded the app, it kind of like, all right, let me start playing with it. Once I started playing with it and kind of figuring it out, and once I kind of figured it out, I just went from there. You know so, did I mean? you have an idea of what the podcast was going to be, the like Angry Dad podcast? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I definitely had an idea. Um, a friend of mine, J Dog, from um, Animal Pack Fitness or Animal Pack, which is a supplement company that I, I highly like, but it's not the supplement company that represents me at the moment. Mm-hmm. But um, the, he has his dad. He'd always his dad would always get mad at him because he'd always record him. He's like Angry Dad going at it again. And I liked it so much, I was like, you know, I asked him, I was like, you mind if I borrow that? And he's like, go right ahead. So I took that, and I was like, all right, that's going to be my name, and I'm going to complain about shit that I hate, shit that I don't like, and the way people do things, and I have to, just no, com- uh, common sense things that people don't do, you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of where it started from. And that's what kind of, from there was the fire. Did you get a lot of feedback at the start when you were doing it, like good or bad? I actually, I didn't even look for feedback, I just kind of just did it, and it felt very therapeutic doing it. So as I, it was being therapeutic, I was like, man, I really like this. Ooh, I like the feeling I have after I produce it. I like the feeling I have once I post it. And it wasn't like to get fame, wasn't to get fortune. Wasn't, I would say most people do. That stuff podcast. is yeah, just it, byproduct. It, it, it's just it. byproduct. But the thing is, is you know, just, it's, yeah, exactly. And that's if you get it. You know what I'm saying? Being an indie podcaster, we don't get shit out of this game. We're here at the mansion. Don't let them yeah. bother you. <laughs> and th- that's the thing. is like um, I just really enjoyed it. And then eventually, you know, um, you know, with all the shit that was going on in my life, 
and be, and it didn't really correlate with me being the angry dad. It just I, it was just more of a general idea. It was I'm gonna point in this direction. This is what I'm gonna yell at. But what ended up happening is, so you I feel like it helped get out some of the aggression. Oh, it helped. It, 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 it helped get gave out. you a source, like kind of like if you were go to the gym or oh yeah, yeah, you know, write write a death yeah. metal song or exactly. Something. Yeah, I'm saying it gave it gave me the ability to speak, even though no one was hearing me. That's how I looked at it. Like the things you say will come into fruition by speaking them. And so I always felt like it, but the thing is, is who do I talk to? Who do I, what's called, you know what I'm saying? I, like, I have my friends, I have my family, but the, the things I wanted to talk about were kind of the things that you don't really speak to people about. And so, you know, at least growing up in my time and era, people's business is not aired out. So do you think that's a big part of the podcast uh, world, that it kind of gives people a voice, and then also with that voice gives that other people on the other end that connection of somebody else has a similar voice that they Exactly, do. exactly. Because you know what I'm saying, everybody's podcast is different, everyone's views are different, but the thing is, is you can always find somebody in something that connects with you on that level. And I think that's what it breaks down to with people as a whole, is that we're, you know, we're, we break down, we pack animals. Yeah. You know, we, we want groups, we want connections, yeah. we want to be, you know, fans of teams, we want to like the same TV yeah. shows. You want that connection with people, so I can understand how, even though sometimes it seems like everybody has a podcast, yeah, it, it really serves a huge pur purpose, even more with the times we're in right now, when we can't leave our homes and we're you know stuck yeah. inside for the most part, and then we can all connect on something. So, do you feel like there's any topic that you wouldn't feel comfortable touching on? No, I, I cover, like when I talk about stuff, I cover all stuff. Like I said, I've had so much crazy shit happen in my life that... No one ever explained to me, so eventually they started getting to that point where, like, well, no one ever told me this, so I didn't know. Like when I was growing up, I'd be at work and I, I'd be hanging out with the older people, the OGs, and they would mention things to me like, "Hey, young buck, what, you know, what about this? You should think about this. Oh, you're having a problem? What's the problem?" And then they would kind of drop a little nugget in my lap, and then when the problem would occur, a problem would happen, I would just use that little tidbit, and it would either make things smoother. Or kind of diffuse the situation, and so. So where did you grow up? I grew up in Dakota. I grew up in Union City. Um, it's in the Bay Area. It's it's right next to Hayward, right in between Fremont, and Newark. Um, it's a hardcore neighborhood. Four, 14 streets of just straight hood, and like I said, you, just living there and being there, you get a lot of respect because you, you know you're you're a crazy motherfucker that's from there. That's so just, were you always a big guy? Oh yeah, I was born. I, I was born a freak. You know what I'm saying? By, by the time I was in the fourth grade, I was already 5'11". I, I was already a, a grown-ass fucking looking man. Did you have the beard? Oh, I had no beard, a little mustache, you know what I'm okay. saying? Just just, slight, just 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 that thick peach fuzz, you know what I'm saying? So now the tattoos, have you? did you start the tattoos young also? Yeah, uh, uh, 14, year old, 14 years old, my 14th birthday, my mom gave me 50 bucks, and I did. I, did. I went and got a tattoo. So my mom wasn't bucks. aware. Oh, she didn't know. She didn't okay. know. I, I went and got the tattoo done. It's my last name on my back. And when you're Mexican, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's usually the first tattoo you get. And so on my back, it says Bowman, you know, right across my shoulders. First tattoo I ever got in my life. That's that's amazing. So that you went with your first tattoo was the uh, the Jersey one. Yep. One on the back. Yep. That's solid. So would, did you grow up and live there your whole youth or did you bounce around a little bit? Um, I basically lived there my whole life. I got in a, a, some trouble and my mom sent me away to go live with my grandma in Washington. I went to Washington, and you could take the homie out the hood, but you can't take the hood out the homie. <laughs> and so I got in some trouble out there. I had to come back. You know okay. I mean? Now, by pr t trouble, did you have you ever had to do time or? I've I've spent some time in juvenile hall. I've spent some time in you know in holding. I've spent some time in solitary, but all juvenile hall time. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So you never had to do any hard. No, nah, no, nah, no hardcore time. Like I said, by the t by the time I turned eighteen, I I've. Uh, I had my first son and I straightened out. Do you feel like because of your tattoos, people assume that you've done a hard time? Oh, people always assume everything. But the thing is, is, you know, people, the first, the first reaction to anybody is you judge a book by its cover. Plain yeah. and simple. Yeah. But also, too, me being tall, be, uh, me being dark-skinned and being Mexican. And most times, people don't correlate Mexican with me because how tall I am. But the thing is, is, you know, so I get profiled instantly. And yeah. so a lot of times, I just, I use it to my advantage. And I use it to my advantage to keep people away from me. But it's a disadvantage because it brings the police towards me, or it'll bring, it'll bring unwanted attention towards me. Would you consider yourself an antisocial person? I'm not an antisocial person at all. Yeah, because I don't, I don't get that from you. But I understand that, like watching your podcast, yeah, I, I, I could see somebody thinking like 
Hey, I just don't like fucking with people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you get, you get annoyed. Yeah. By the public. Yeah. A lot. But I know you as being in social settings. I'm oh, yeah. No, no. I'm very social. social I'm very, what's called, but the thing is, is I grew up in a hostile environment. I grew up in, everything's always in tension. This person's against this person. I'm against this person. This is my line. This is my side. I defend my line. I defend my side. And I always need to be ready, steady, and fast. If something pops off, I'm the I'm expected <clears throat> to be the first person to jump off. So do you think that's something that's... Because, I mean, I grew up in this area. Mm-hmm. So uh, to me, that's something that's very bay. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, I was trying to explain it to other people to where it's like... In the Bay Area, you always feel like somebody's trying to get over on you a little yeah. bit or sell you something. Yeah. So you're always keeping somebody kind of yeah. at that at that you know arm's yeah. length, even yeah. though you're letting them in. You're like, ah, what's going on? Yeah. There? You know. Well, I mean? see, I I grew, I grew up with gang mentality. You know what I'm saying? Like where, where I'm from, it it, it it was always gang. Everything's gang related. Every everything's gang set, and it's our side versus your side. Period. So you were don't, you a part of a gang? Yes, I was. I was from Dakota. You know what I'm saying? That, that VGD Vario Grande Dakota, and that. Having that on me, it's tattooed on my chest from from its big ass letters. It, it it's a it's a sign of I'm a powerful, crazy, don't mess with me person because that's what we're we're, we're known for no nonsense. We're known for no talk back. We're known for like we, we just handle shit. You know. So what I'm was there a time that you like? Cause I are you still in the game? You know, you're born raised. That's just how it goes. It's, it, it, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, it, it, I'm not expected to do anything. I don't expect myself to do anything. But the thing is, is I grew out but of that But if they lifestyle. called you, if, if they called me, no, that's the thing, though, too. If, if there's a difference between them calling me and me being ready. Because what it is, is I'm not active. I'm yeah. not out on the streets. I'm not running the block. I'm not selling drugs. I'm not... You're retired. I, yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm at a point in my life where I've already done good. Because what it is, you get a lot of people that try to be half in, half out. Yeah. They're trying to be... Like, I'm from the hood, but I got a family. I'm like, no, I'm like, I understand I'm from the hood, but I understand I'm only about my family. Yeah, my yeah. family comes first. The the streets family, the streets this, it's all love. So do you still keep in touch with I talk to a lot of them all the time. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You know, like I said, it's all love. Nothing is expected of me. I don't expect nothing of them. I'm not calling them for my problems or my That's issues. Because cool, you know the, uh, the way that society would have you believe it. Yeah. You know, it's like a... Once you're in, you're oh, in. Yeah. The only way you leave is yeah, in a body bag. Yeah. But that's the thing, though, too, is like that's when you get that half in, half out. You can't just be I'm about the streets and I'm doing this, and then all of a sudden, you when something serious comes down, you bitch out yeah, because yeah. then right you're off like, top, I yeah, you good get in yeah, khakis, yeah, exactly. I don't really want to shoot yeah, anybody. Exactly, but that's the thing, though, too, is like when I was a kid, I was a frontliner. I was, I was starting fights. I was handling business. I was. I was doing these things because... Because you definitely, if I was to put a gang together, yeah. you definitely would fit the enforcer oh, role. Yeah. Well, that's, in well, the it, it's, it's, that's the thing, too, is we weren't even enforcer. Like, in our in our neighborhood, there was cliques. And with the cliques, you know what I'm saying, everyone has their own little groups, but we all understand that we're all together. You know what I'm saying? It's all love for each one of us. We see each other. We say what's up to each other. We know all of Because er, er, basically, almost everyone is family by default because... In our neighborhood was so small that this family's good with this family. Families intermingle, intermarry, all this stuff. So, so it's more about neighborhoods. Yeah, no, it's, it's it 100% like a neighborhood. See, that's necessarily a, being violent or yeah, no. having a problem with somebody else. Exactly. It's more about like, we are this community. Yeah. We're going to protect ourselves. Exactly. Things that people have done since ancient yeah, times. Yeah, since ancient times. And yeah. that's exactly it. Like, that's how Dakota was always viewed. Within these 14 streets is us. And it, even more when you're in an area where you don't feel like you're taken care of by the government yeah. or by society yep. or helped out. That's it. I can see even more. You're like, oh, no, this is what we got. We yeah. got these people around here to help me to get my Exactly. Bed, and this is what I need to work with. Exactly. That makes so sense. So at what point, like what age were you when you decided to move out of that area or that you um, got out of that? I actually area? never really moved. I just recently moved out of that area because, um, like I said, I was born and raised. And then um, once I was uh, 17, turning 18, and having my first kid, and I told myself, I made a, like, a note in time. I'm like, I'm not like my father. My father was never around. No, my father was never, never there to raise me. My mom raised me. My grandma raised me. And my uncles were, help, they were there to help. But the thing is, is I told myself at that moment in time, me knowing my first son's coming on his way, that that's not me. Yeah. This is not me. I will be here for my kids. I will take care of my kids. I will sacrifice for my kids because no one did that for me. I want to make sure that my kids live a better life than me. And that's how it ended up turning out. All my kids don't know my lifestyle. They don't know what I've been through. They don't know any of the stuff that I've uh, gone through. because. And they hear stories because we talk all the time. But the thing is, is 
They don't live that life. Yeah, that's and that's I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah. They, they don't have to live that life yeah. that you had to live, and it was yeah. just so natural for you to live. And they don't have to experience it. They yeah, get to ever. experience the joy, and you get to protect them from exactly. that. Exactly. And they that's in the regular children's lives. You know, they have fun. They play their games. They play with their friends. Yeah. And they're not worried about bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. The stuff that you had to grow up. Yeah. So when you decided to move, when you said you. St- we just recently, uh, just, just like I said, recently. we just recently moved to Fairville. Okay. I basically lived in Dakota my whole life. So the kids were still living in that. Area. Oh yeah, yeah. We all still in that area. But the thing is, is like I said, um. It, areas calm down, areas gentrified, and you know, Union City, Dakota was not, you know, excluded not from what that. It was yeah, when you yeah. Were, it's not yeah, what it was, yeah. but it was still popping. Yeah. It still does pop off to this day. But the thing is, is I didn't like when I was growing up. It was fed into me. My uncles, my family, my friends. We all like this is the group. This is what we do. This is how things get handled. We drink, we smoke, we party, we enjoy our weekends, and we do crazy many shit. Yeah, we do crazy many shit like every weekend. Family. But the thing is, is that's what I was fed into. But I partied, I drank, I did drugs, and then I don't party, I don't drink. I do drink here and there, seldom, you know, but I don't do any of these other things because that's not what I wanted my kids to see. So now your main interests are what? My main interests, I, I love bodybuilding, I love my podcast, I love working out, I, I love you motivating. Bodybuilding and working out? Yeah, it's two different things. <laughs> bodybuilding is a completely okay, different. See, that's yeah. why I came to you, because yeah. I know you're the master yeah. of all this stuff. So what's the difference between bodybuilding and working out? Well, bodybuilding is, the, the difference between bodybuilding and working out is people who work out just go through the motions. People just do things, you know what I'm saying? But bodybuilding is an intent. I know specifically what I want to do, I know specifically how to get it done, and this is the tactics and, and training methods that I need to do. It's a precise, precision tool. So if somebody was looking to do that, to yeah. looking to build a body yeah. as opposed to just working out, yeah. what would you say the first thing? Because I know there's all sorts of avenues you can take, yeah. do different workouts, different meal yeah. plans. Would you like have somebody start YouTubing? Yeah. Like, what would you say the first step you would want to take? Uh, my first step is to figure out what you want to do in bodybuilding. Bodybuilding, there's different categories. There's uh, there's actual body, uh, you know, bodybuilding, men's physique, classic. You know what I'm saying? Board shorts. There, there's, there's different aspects and levels. What's board that, shorts. They, they basically. I think just, that would be mine. Yeah, they, they, it's basically like a men's physique, just not as much muscle. That's you know what I'm saying? It, all it is is just upper body. And um, you have classic physique, where you know it's like meant to be like the 70s and 80s style like, of, of body shorts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then you have That's you know more then you have, and then you have you know hardcore bodybuilding where it's mass monsters. That's what I love. That's what I love doing. I've seen the pictures. Yeah, yeah. He has you know, pictures yeah. of guys all over his wall. Exactly, and. You know, it's different different ways to attack it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to go heavy and hard or... So, but that's what I'm saying. Like, so for figuring out the workouts, because that's one thing I run into. It's like, yeah. I can, I play sports, so I can yeah. do something if you tell me what yeah. to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Tell me, run tw- yeah. 20 laps, I'll run the 20 laps. Yeah. Tell me do the push-ups. Yeah. Yeah. But if I don't, if I don't have somebody tell me, it's like, ah, well, see, that's so a, that's, where do you get like that direction of, oh, this is what I need. So I'm going to do shoulders today yeah. and I'm going to hit these three workouts. Yeah. Are you YouTubing or are you just, um, when I first started, I didn't know what I was doing. I, I, I was work. I would call what I was doing was working out okay. because I just went in the gym. I did what I saw. I did what I read. I just like YouTubing. And then it got to the point where I was taking this quite serious. And I had a couple of friends that were like, you know, we see you taking this serious. We're bodybuilders. We're going to train you. And so they taught me to that. They took me to that next level of what training is. And it's training is not just working out. It's like you said, you, like I was saying, you go into the gym with intent. Like I'm hitting this muscle, but I'm working this muscle. And it's just not going through the motions. You have to feel so the, the motion. We, so the, you would say the biggest thing between hitting a muscle and, and feeling like really getting yeah. results is what? It, it, it's, t- it's time under tension. It's mind muscle connection. That's the strongest thing. It's it's something that's hard to teach, but once learned, it's mind kept, muscle connection. connection. Yeah, I've my, never heard that. One. Mind muscle connection is in your head. You see your muscle moving. You see your muscle working, and then you feel it to the point where it's about to explode. And it's having the actual contraction. I can feel the contraction going from my bicep stretched to the point it peaks. And so having that mind muscle connection. Physically makes it stronger, thicker, and better. So it's just really like being in tune. With oh body yeah, yeah. You have you, once you dial your body in and you have it in tune to the point where you can physically, see, literally physically feel the the mo- muscle moving in your mind. Yeah. Once you have that connection, it sounds like some Jedi. Oh, it is some Jedi shit. Because that's what I thought it was. But then once I started training and working, and like 
when I started training people to do bodybuilding, training people to have this body and aesthetics and strength, yeah. once they learned it, they're like, I see what you're saying. Because it's a whole different level of workout. It's a much more different pain. It's a much it more different again? mind muscle connection. Mind muscle connection. Yeah, it, so it, but it's the most important thing you can train. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, people go through motions. When people work out, they're going through motions. Like, I know I need to do this. I know I need to do presses. I know I need to do lats. So with that, with a uh, mind muscle connection, muscle connection, I'm have to write yeah. that down. Um, so is it about how many? It's not as much then I would assume mm -hmm. about how many sets you're doing no. or how many. No, okay. you you when you do when mind muscle connection it's actually about happens, when your body's telling you okay that's enough. Yeah, it's not even telling you what's enough. It's knowing how to push past enough. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? Because that, that, that is the next level. And, and what it is is people can work out, people can have mind muscle connection, but the thing is, is you have to know your limits. But you also have to know what your breaking point is. There's a difference. Li li limitations are where you need to stop. Breaking points is when you break yourself. You see what I'm saying? So, so physically you break yourself? Physically break yourself. You need like to be broken able, arm? Broken arm. You need to be able to take yourself to that point to where I'm almost there. Then you go away. Then you stop. So you almost break your you arm. You almost break your arm. You almost rip the muscle. That you almost do dangerous. This. But it is dangerous. But the thing is, is when you have the muscle muscle connection, you understand that... This is what it takes and you to know build how that. To give I, yourself yeah, that break. Yeah, exactly. Point. I know how to take myself to that break. I know how to take myself to that level, and I know how to. And I, I've learned to take people to that limit and to that level to where they're like they're getting the results they want. They want to like like I said. I've had four or five guys that I've trained, and each one of them like I fucking love what I do now. I That's love tight. working. Out. I can't wait. I'm definitely gonna get in here with this man mm -hmm. and get in the gym mm -hmm. and work on my physique. And see if I can get a, what's the board Mine short body? Yeah, yeah board short body. I want a board short body. Mm -hmm. But is that, does that have abs? Yeah. But you said all I got to do is have thick thighs to have abs, right? Thick thighs. You know thick thighs, that's thick the thighs. secret. That's it. Well, man, I really appreciate you having me on here today. Uh, thank you, you know, brother. Appreciate it. This was dope to do. I hope everybody got a chance to, like, learn more about you mm -hmm. and about, like, what makes you tick. And oh, yeah. A little bit of background that none of us knew. That's it. You know, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you doing this with me. Uh, before we stop, uh, go ahead and let them know where they can find you. Link, list uh, your social medias. Co uh, Instagram, Cody underscore B underscore Ballard. And then Facebook is my name because that's our Facebook. That's it. Is. I'll put all those links in the bottom. Uh, you guys know me. I'm the angry motherfucking dad. You want to watch this shit? IGTV, YouTube. You want to listen to it? Spreaker, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, SoundCloud, Deezer, iHeartRadio. This motherfucker's everywhere. You can easily fucking find it. Also, too, make sure you rate, review, like, subscribe, share this shit. You know somebody needs to listen to what I got to say? Pass it the fuck on. Also, too, I'm part of the SIP Network, a slightly irregular podcast network. These are powerful podcasters that place our fucking powers together, our fucking, you're uniting to get shit started, you're uniting to get keys. shit, exactly, trying to make this shit happen. Make sure you go to their Instagram, make sure you go to SIPnet.us, that's our website, it'll take you to every one of our sites, every one of our podcasts, every one of our platforms, you can even go to my, my uh, T Public store from there. Order yourself some merchandise. Order that some bucket. gear. I That's got it. myself. I ordered two shirts. You know what I'm I can't wait for those to come in. I That's got the it. one that says, guess the fuck what? That's can't it. Wait. You know what I'm saying? So thank you guys for watching. I'll see y'all motherfuckers on the next one. Fuck. Always Always living. Always living. Always living. Always living.